And uh, let's see here. This is uh, number 18. This is a uh, Squelch Reverse. This is your PTT ID, which is a push to talk identifi identifier. So this is in connection with the ANI system. So we'll go back to set the ANI. So we actually hear it on our end. So it just transmitted that. And see how it's uh, it's got two different, it's got three different options here. It's got EOT, end of transmission, BOT, beginning of transmission, or both. So just for fun, we're gonna go to a different frequency here because we know this one's being used. change this so we're not hearing it on our end. Radio check one two one two. Now you talk you start talking. It's not gonna actually transmit your voice until it's done transmitting that tone, which is why it makes sense. Sorry. To have that on. Um, the A and I function is something that is, you know, used for um, basically uh, <clears throat> fleet identification. It's a, a radio identification. So this is PTT light. So how long is the backlight going to stay lit after you press the push to talk button? You can adjust that there. Uh, this is going to be your uh, display, mode display A frequency, channel, or name. So if you go into Chirp or another programming software and you change the name of a, of a channel, a memory channel, um, and you have that set to name, it'll show you that, that alias on there if this is set to name. If there's no alias associated with the channel, it'll just show the channel number. Same with channel. And if it's frequency, it'll show the frequency and then the channel number in the corner. And you can set that differently for A and B. Uh, BCL is busy channel lockout. So if there's another signal on the frequency, even if it's you know a different, not transmitting the right CTCSS or DCS uh, tone or code, um, busy channel lockout is going to prevent you from transmitting on a busy channel. Uh, auto lock is uh, what it sounds like. Automatically locks the keypad just like you can by holding down the pound button for three seconds. See how the keypad is now locked. Shift D, this is for repeaters. So shift uh, D is plus for positive offset or negative for a negative offset or off. And then here's your offset. So to change your offset, press menu and you know, say you want to do a GMRS repeater, which would be a five megahertz positive offset. You'd set it like that. See how we've got that plus on there? There we go. So for simplex operations, you can leave that alone. This is how you program in memory channels, which is something we discussed in the previous video. Um, this is your, um, you know, backlight color. So we've got orange, blue, and purple, or off. So We've got three settings here. WT is just when the radio is in tra uh, standby mode. RX is when the radio is receiving. And TX is when the radio is transmitting. Like that. Um, I like to leave them both on blue or in some cases change it so RX is purple. But it's best to leave it at blue. I mean, it's whatever you want it to do. I really don't care. Um, this is alarm mode. So that's, that's transmits the alarm if you hold down the alarm button. 
Oh great, I have to go back, okay. All right, so we got tone, code, which is gonna transmit your, your ANI, and it's gonna, and it's gonna play that. You flash the light. And you can press the alarm or push to talk to deactivate that. Just turns on the alarm locally for the radio. And band, don't mess with that. TDR AB um, is the uh, dual watch priority, so the A or the B side. STE stands for squelch tail elimination. Um, and in order for this to work, both radios need to have it on. Um, I always turn it off, but uh, some people like to leave it on. It's on by default, which I think is kind of silly. Um, RP, S-T-E, is repeater squelch tail elimination. Same thing, uh, but for repeater operation. And there's 10 different settings here. I just leave it off. Um, RPRL is, I believe, what is that? I have no idea. Um, all right, that's a new one. Um, maybe reverse? No, that can't be right. Um, okay, and then this is a power on message. So you can either have it say a message, which you would program in the software, or full. So that's full. Just uh, lights up every, um, uh, you know, part of the display. And then message... You can program it to say, you know, welcome is the default, or, you know, you can have it say whatever you want it to say. Um, Roger is uh, the Roger beep. And uh, if you have it set... Really? Check one, two, three, four. This is the annoying Roger beep. Yeah, turn that crap off. And it will work with the ANI, by the way. Um, this is the reset function, so I already did that. We're not going to do that. It's just going to reset it back to factory default. And then we're back to one, or just zero squelch. So those are your menu settings. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, the most important ones are going to be uh, your power level. Your bandwidth or deviation. Excuse me. Uh, and your uh, selective calling or tone squelch function. So... You know, if you're setting this thing up for simplex technical radio use, uh, I recommend using a, a CTCSS. DCS can be tricky, and we'll get into that in another video. Um, but there are not as many DCS tones as some people would lead you to believe because of uh, falsing and, and things like that. Another thing to kind of be weary of is use of, just turn this off, gosh, there we go, uh, use of the CTCSS tone 136.5. Uh, 136.5, because this is a subaudible tone, it's a, a, it's transmitting that tone, you can't hear it, but the radio can hear it. Um, the reason this is kind of suspect is that DCS transmits a frequency shift keen um, at uh, signal at 134.4 .4. 
uh, BPS. So 134.4, 136.5. These are very close to each other. They're too close for comfort. So a lot of radios, especially cheap radios like this one, they may say that, you know, we've got our, our radio set, to, you know, so our tone squelch is set at uh, 136.5. Um, if there's somebody else on the frequency and they're using DCS, especially if it's a strong signal, the radio will decode that DCS, the, the FSK signal for DCS, as 136.5 and open the squelch. So it can cause a lot of annoying, um, uh, you know, false weird falsing signals, it'll seem like there's something wrong with the radio, or there's something wrong with your system, or whatever you, you know, however you want to do it. Um, so what I would do is, is, is I recommend using tones that are uh, above 74.4 or above, ideally uh, 97.4 or above, uh, up to uh, 199.5. 